All right, this Ross show opened up with Nikki A.S.H. coming out for a promo. And she got the usual, you deserve it chant. Although she did get booze whenever she mentioned her outfit or the butterfly that was on it. Yeah, it wasn't thunderous booing, but I mean, it was like booze, but she she did. The outfit. Yeah. Yeah. She 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 said that she. uh, She got booed at the house shows, too. I mean, not. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. She said uh, she never used to have confidence because she was afraid of failure, but then she has realized that this outfit gives her the confidence and that failing doesn't matter and you can overcome the odds and you just have to believe in yourself. Total goofball, generic, babyface deal. Charlotte yes. Flair comes out. and I, mean, I, I, uh, I, sen- I, I sense the idea is, is they're trying to market her for kids. You know, with a superhero well, obviously, outfit. Obviously, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, I so that's, there's that's way the, more old people that watch this show than children. Way more. Yes. Way more. So Charlotte comes out and says it's all disgraceful, and Rhea Ripley's the one that cost her the match, and she wants her championship rematch right now at SummerSlam. And, of course, then Rhea comes out, and she got a big baby face reaction, and she says that... She, uh, Charlotte was champion for a whopping one day, and then last week Charlotte tried to get herself disqualified because she knew she was about to lose. She wants to match at SummerSlam. Nikki doesn't understand why either of them think they can beat her, and she talks about her butterfly again. It represents metamorphosis, and this got some more booze. And then finally, Sonya and Adam Pearce come out, and Sonya announces it will be a triple threat match at SummerSlam. Which uh, makes Charlotte very upset. And Charlotte demands a non-title match tonight. And they make it official. And then uh, Charlotte attacks Rhea. And then Nikki dropkicks Charlotte outside. So three-way program leading to SummerSlam. Which sounds to me like a lot of jobs for Nikki Ash on the way there. God, I hope not. But you're probably right. I mean, we already had the first one tonight. Probably going to lose it. Rhea Ripley in a non-title match, too, down down the line, just to make it even, right? We had a Damien Priest promo talking about Sheamus, and uh, it was a good promo, and he wants to face him tonight, which, amazingly, they've been building this up for several weeks now, and uh, they actually paid it off tonight, as we'll get to. Uh, in fact, it was next. It was Priest and Sheamus, and they had a good match. It was a championship contenders match, because I guess if you say number one contender, then I guess they think fans are going to ask, like, who's the number two contender and where are your rankings? So instead, they just called a championship contenders match. And it's pretty good. They kicked out of a lot of stuff. And finally, Priest hits him with this uh, this big choke slam off the, off the ropes for a near fall. Sheamus hit him with an Alabama slam for a near fall. And then finally, Priest hits him with the hit the lights and wins. So uh, if this is uh, the way they've been doing things lately, we'll have another non-title match mm-hmm. next week and then that he can after. win and before then we'll he finally get, and, and, gets a championship match. And we'll, ne- so. we'll never get the championship match the way things are being done now. Although I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he, you know, he'll probably have a championship match at SummerSlam. Well, it's funny you say that, Dave, because a match we never thought they were actually going to deliver, but they did, ended up being the Viking Raiders versus AJ and Omos. Well, it was advertised. I, I expected that they that they would. They, well, they we were, talked about this last week about how they won the number one contendership like a month ago. No, they but had, then they, they never they, actually got the match. Yeah, they did on the pay per view. Well, they finally got another one here. <laughs> they, yeah, they lost did on the pay per view. They lost clean on the pay per view, and then they got a rematch for no reason. Yes, they did. I'm saying this and booking they, doesn't make any sense. They lost again here, and uh, AJ and Omos, like, they don't even play their entrance because they just get huge cheers, and then they're over during the match as well, and Styles hits the uh, springboard 450, he gets the pin, and then the crowd goes crazy, they jump to their feet, they're cheering, and AJ and Omos are celebrating, and it's like, why are these men not baby faces? What's going on here? Like, it's patently obvious that the people want to cheer AJ and Omos, so I don't know why they bother pushing them as heel champions. Yeah, especially because it kills all the baby faces they wrestle because everyone's, like, Omos can throw everybody around as a baby face, and it's okay because it's just the heel selling. But when he throws around two baby faces at the same time, he just kills them as baby faces. When you got one guy beating up two, that's never a good recipe for, for, um, 
for the two to be the baby faces, you know, because not only they have the man advantage, but they're not e- but they're not even like they're getting beat up in a fair fight two on one. That's not a baby face. That's not what a baby face should be doing. Being doing. So Jinder Mahal comes out and he wants Drew McIntyre to apologize for killing poor Shanky last week, and it, Drew McIntyre refuses to apologize, and so Jinder Mahal says, "Well, I've got this attorney here." And uh, perhaps we're going to have to file a lawsuit. But first, you're going to be facing Veer. And so it's Drew McIntyre versus Veer. I like this Veer. He's uh, he's an explosive guy. He's, he's fast. He's athletic. Like, I don't know how good he's going to end up being, but I thought this was fun for the... For the time they I mean, had, it, it had it had its rough moments. It wasn't like the caliber of a usual McIntyre match, but it was fine, and it was it it was it was fine. Shit finish, the um, dude. This the finish, thing- so they do this this finish here where Veer is is uh, he gets a chair that Jinder Mahal slid into the ring, so Jinder slides the chair in. Veer lifts the chair up. Drew claymores the chair into his face. They ring the bell and they announce a disqualification. That the announcer says that Drew is the winner, but then the announcers go out of their way to explain that Veer, in fact, is the winner via DQ. Which, of course, makes no sense because we've seen a million times the heel brings the gimmick into the ring and then it gets drop kicked in his face. It's never a DQ for the guy that kicked it. It's always a DQ if the guy uses the weapon that he brought into the ring. So anyway, the whole thing didn't make any sense, but I guess officially Veer was the winner of this match. Okay. It's interesting because they obviously have a directive to put over Veer as a great athlete. And then they never tell the story of Veer being a great athlete. No, they I mean, don't. It's, like, it's a mystery. I was waiting. I was waiting, too, when they keep talking about, like, he's a great athlete. And it's like, you know, yeah, he's, he, you know, he threw the, he never picked up a baseball in his life. And he threw the fastest pitch in India. Um, and you can do that. Like, I mean, I know pitching is not considered like street fighting, but you can still sell the idea that he's got incredible power in those arms that he could pitch a fastball 100 miles an hour without ever having pitching training or whatever it was 90 miles an hour I don't know seven, you know what I don't know how fast it really was but it was fast for a non pitcher you know for some dude off the street and that's what he was so I mean there's ways to you know talk about how he had never played baseball as a kid and he was playing minor league baseball in the United States the first Indian ever to do that so they told none of that story but they kept trying to get him over as an athlete anyway let me ask you a question, Dave. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong that Pro- they brought up <laughs> they brought up uh, Shotzi and Knox from NXT? Yes, they won a non-title match. They, they, they were rewarded they... with a second non-title match, which they also and they won. won the second non-title match. And then I could have sworn over the weekend on social media they announced that they were going to get a tag team title match on SmackDown this week, which never happened, right? No, this week was um, this week they were only there in. Um, I don't remember them announcing the tag title match. Um, the only thing that they had was uh, they were fixing the tank, and they never yes. even brought up during the show that they'd no. won two non-title matches during. I mean, it wasn't even brought up. And yeah, no. Natty wasn't hurt yet. That was you know obviously. So yeah, no, that was one of the things on SmackDown that I didn't understand at all. Like like why are they not building up the championship match? They beat him twice. And not only not building it up, but not even talking about it, but they're actually on the show doing something, you know, doing some comedy skit where they shoot this this ball into Baron Corbin's groin so they could do like a crotch humor, you know. Well, tonight we had Natty and Tamina facing Eva and Dewdrop, and we talked about this match. Uh, Natty got injured, and so she tags in Tamina, and I presume that they just had to do whatever because obviously Natty wasn't supposed to be injured. So Tamina gets in there with Dewdrop and they do some spots. And then uh, obviously Eva Marie wants to get in after Dewdrop has laid out Tamina. So she gets in there and Tamina, of course, kicks out. And then we get a video on the Titan Tron. And you could hear them turn down the audience uh, sound. And it's a Lily Lucian video where Alexa is doing a parody of Evolution with the doll. 
And Eva Marie is distracted, and Tamina super kicks her and pins her. The stuff is horrible. It was bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can I say? I, um, yeah. And injury. So now, uh, what happens with the tag team championship? I don't I mean, know. It's nobody's fault. It's not. But but now we have to figure out if Natty's going to be out of action for any length of time. Um, do you do a tournament? Do you? What do you do? Probably do a battle royal, and the winners are the new champions. Oh man, I hope not. We had Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee. They just like literally go to commercial and they say, "When we come back, it's Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee." Yeah, Obviously, not, Jeff not, Hardy can't be there because of COVID. Yeah, not but like. Um, yeah, not like mentioning it any time during the show, pre- previewing it. I mean, we no. didn't even know these two guys were even going to be on the TV show, but there they were, and. Um, you know, I mean, the the thing with this match was is that it. Uh, I thought it exposed both guys in the sense that both were working in a manner that is their weakest manner. Like, um, you know, the, um, Keith Lee in particular was doing all the things that he never did on the Indies because it's, it's, not, it's not the stuff he's good at, and none of the things he's good at. And um, you know, so um, m- um, Cross was doing I mean Cross was doing what he does I just thought you know maybe Keith Lee's tough to do that with and he did get a couple of impressive throws but I mean the key thing is the crowd was not in this match at all what a shocker after last week yeah I mean Karrion Cross losing two minutes to Jeff Hardy you bring him back for a match with Keith Lee who came back last week and he was beaten in like three minutes they give him 10 minutes not quite 10 minutes but uh, and most of that by the way for us is a commercial break so they come back, and Keith Lee goes for the spirit bomb. Cross slips behind, hits him with a high-angle Saito, puts him in the cross jacket, and Lee taps out. And that was the end of that. Yeah, no um, direction afterwards either for either guy. Nothing. Zero zilch. Yeah. But Although Keith cro- Lee did, uh, he did send out a tweet uh, later in the evening where uh, he actually deleted his first tweet, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me actually find out here. Uh, Yes, I believe he deleted his first tweet, which was... uh, The first tweet was something where he said... uh, It was something like, um, uh, two straight weeks... uh, God, what did he say? Something about, I've basically practically been squashed for two straight weeks, and... That's true. uh, Anyway, then he, he deletes it, and then he tweets out, I've decided I am just going to tell you guys the story myself. Give me a week or two. So whatever it was that has been the issue for seven months, Keith Lee is saying that within a week or two, he's just going to tell the world what happened. Okay. So there you go. Didn't seem happy this evening. Can't imagine why. Well... Look at the work. I mean, it was like he did everything that he that, that he never that he usually doesn't do. He was trying to do, he was trying to be somebody else's big man as opposed to being himself. Nikki does a promo and same deal. I want the little children to know that these hard challenges are worth fighting for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Rhea shows up and says, "Listen, I plan to win in this belt at SummerSlam, but I would like to see you give Charlotte hell tonight." We had Mansoor and Mustafa Ali versus Mace and T-Bar. And Mace and T-Bar just beat up Mustafa Ali for the entire match and then finally takes in Mansoor. And they do a couple of spots. Ali ends up outside the ring. And uh, Mansoor rolls up Mace. And uh, Mace landed right on his head, by the way, on a roll-up. And he pins him. And then Ali is shocked. And Mansoor is happy. And he hugs him. And he raises his arm. And Ali's not sure what to make of all of this, but... He is, he seemingly is impressed by this Mansoor, so. I figure it's going to be leading to these two guys, like, feuding, but, I mean, Mustafa Ali should be a babyface. I don't know why he's a heel. I mean, to turn a guy babyface, put him with Mansoor, we could use some babyface tag teams, but I don't have a lot of faith. Yeah. Bobby Lashley comes out to respond to Goldberg, and uh, as you noted, just like on SmackDown... He will not respond to Goldberg. 
And Cedric interrupts, and he wants to face Lashley. Shelton Benjamin interrupts. He wants to face Lashley. Lashley grabs the bike, total baby face, goes, I'll take on both of them at the same time. So we have a one-on-two handicap match, and Bobby Lashley destroys these two dudes. He stacks them like Roman Reigns. He pins them in three minutes, and that's the end of those two guys again. I think they. <clears throat> I think it's been, been the end of those two guys ever since they got kicked out of the Hurt Business. Yeah. John Morrison and Riddle had a fun match. And Not a good finish, it, though. No. Riddle hit uh, Miz with a PK uh, penalty kick on the apron, and Miz took the bump backwards over the wheelchair and acted like he was stuck on his back again. Omos and Styles come down, and Omos grabs the scooter... He breaks it over his knee. Riddle's all sad because that scooter was for Randy. And Morrison ends up hitting the Starship Pain on a distracted Riddle and wins. Uh, Styles lays out Riddle with the Styles Clash. The people are chanting for Randy Orton. Still no Randy Orton. He is still nope. gone on. He's supposed to be back Monday in, in Chicago. At least he's advertising the Chicago market to be back next week. Well, it makes sense for him to come back and uh, make the big save and set up a tag title match for SummerSlam. Yep, yeah, it does make sense. Then the tag title match is exactly what seems to make sense. Reginald beat R-Truth to retain the 24-7 title. Just did a bunch of flips and flipped onto him, pinned him. All the geeks came out, and he did more flips, and uh, that was that. Not much to say. And then the main event was Charlotte and Nikki A.S.H. And uh, I swear to God, Charlotte beats her up, and she beats her up, and she beats her up, and she beats her up. Chopped her chest raw. Chopped her chest raw, beat her up. Finally, Nikki gets a quick comeback. She goes up to the top rope. She tries a high cross. Charlotte rolls through. She covers her, doesn't grab the tights, nothing. And she pins her in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. Yep. I was just like, what? Well, I mean, I wasn't. I figured Charlotte was going to win. But then to an, I went, when, they, when they set up the angle for a non-title match next week after a non-title match, that was perplexing. Yeah, Kevin Patrick interviews Charlotte, and she says, nobody's in my league. Nikki grabs a mic. She says, she actually says, I showed that I was almost a superhero. I showed that I almost could have won. I'm like, you're the fucking champion. Like, you're happy that you proved to yourself you almost beat the challenger? And so then she's so confident that she wants to face Charlotte in a rematch next week. Charlotte says, okay. And then you'll be stunned. Charlotte beats the shit out of Nikki and leaves her laying as the show goes off the air. I was like, oh my god, I got it. No one is ever going to be elevated actually for real in this company. But such is life. It does feel that way a lot of the time. That was uh that was a raw show there. I've seen worse. Man, oh, yeah. this is some but this, but the, bad but this, booking. Um I mean the wrestling's fine, you know, um, but the booking the booking is it was was pretty bad tonight, yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.